الله وفي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Dear viewers, welcome back to our show Al-Hikam Al-Ata'iyah The Book of Wisdoms that was written by Al-Imam Ibn Ata'illah Sakandari in the 7th century of the Islamic calendar. We have now reached the ninth hikmah in which the Imam says, Tanawa'at ajnasu al-a'mal bi tanawa'i waridati al-ahwal. The Imam now is going to talk about actions or deeds. And he says in this hikmah that actions differ because the inspirations of the spirit or the inspirations of the states of being differ. So al-a'mal are the things we do, the righteous deeds we do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as to do good to mankind and other creatures. But as we've seen in our lives, actions are different. There's many different forms of actions. Tanawa'at ajnasul a'mal, that actions are different. There's a variety of actions. And the reason being, bitanawa'i waridat al-ahwal. The Imam here has used different vocabulary, maybe some vocabulary that we're not used to. He's talked about waridat because of the variation of the inspirations of the states of being, being different. Warid huwa ma yaridu ala al-qalb. Warid is the singular, singular of uh, waridat and it is what comes to the heart. It is an inspiration or a state of the heart, we may say so. And then he mentions al-ahwal. Ahwal is a plural of hal. Hal is the state of the heart. So at different times, one might have different states of the heart. And this is brought about maybe by past experiences or it's brought about by what someone is going through at the moment. Like when someone is in a state of sadness, he might be inclined to doing certain acts. And when one is in a state of happiness, he might do different acts. If someone grew up an orphan and he went through hardship, once he becomes older and has the means, he might be inclined to helping the orphans. He might even open an orphanage. So actions vary in, in, in forms and in types. We have uh, deeds like prayers, we have fasting, you have uh, being attached to the Quran, you have actions like uh, forms of charity, like feeding the poor, visiting the sick, helping the widows, helping orphans, and so forth and so on. So he's telling us here that the reason for the actions being different is because the waridat can, can change. And different people might have different waridat, might have different inspirations. And that is why you'll find someone is always into charity work, while someone else is into teaching, or they call it a calling. Uh, some, some, some forms of work or actions are a calling, like teaching, for example. And others uh, like visiting the sick. So whenever they hear someone is unwell, they don't delay in, in going to visit the sick because they know uh, the amount of joy you give to a sick person when you visit them. And so forth and so on. So actions can be outward, actions of the limbs, and actions as well can be inward. There's the actions of the heart. And all these are still related to the waridat, the inspirations of the state of being. So actions of the heart can be zuhd, where someone 
someone becomes indifferent to this world, the, the pleasures of this world become secondary to him. He is not driven by the beauties and uh, allures of this world. He becomes a Zahid. Someone else can have what we call Alwara. Alwara is uh, being very careful to stay away from the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. So someone who is wari' it becomes very scrupulous. He doesn't engage in business transactions until he finds out whether it's permissible or not. He doesn't eat anything unless he has made sure that from the moment that the seed or plant was, uh, was planted, everything was done in the right way. But these are what we call maqamat. These are not for everyone. And in this uh, field of tazkia, there's different terms. There is hal and there's maqam. The imam here talked about hal. Hal is something that doesn't last forever. It comes and goes, it changes. We can translate it as a state. It can be in a state of happiness and then it changes to a state of sorrow. And it changes to a state of uh, anxiety. But maqam is something that lasts. We can call it a station. So when someone becomes Zahid, he has attained the station of Zuhd. So all his actions are going to be driven by the station of Zuhd. When someone is a Muhib, someone has reached the Maqam of Al Mahbubiya, where he loves Allah and Allah loves him. He loves the messenger of Allah and the messenger of Allah loves him. He will, all his actions will be driven by this station continuously. So the talk today is with regards to Al-Ahwal. Al-Ahwal are the states that keep changing. And all this, if you've paid keen attention, are to do with the, with the heart. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudgha. That indeed, in the body of the human being is a piece of flesh. Ida salahat salah al jasadu kullu. Wa ida fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu. And if this piece of flesh is sound or is good, then the whole body will be sound. But if this piece of flesh is corrupt, then the whole body will be corrupt. And here, the soundness and corruption is not really biological. We know the heart is important biologically, but what we are talking about here is the spiritual world. Everything is driven by the heart. So the heart is the king of the kingdom, which is the body. And if this heart is cleansed from the sicknesses like pride, arrogance, and uh, jealousy, and so forth, all this translates to someone's actions. Because when someone is jealous, it shows. It shows in how he looks at people. It shows in his body language. It shows in his speech. And all this is because of the state of the, of the heart. But if someone, on the other hand, is loving, someone has mercy in the heart, then it also shows in his outward actions, the way he treats other people and what he is inclined to. So the heart normally will have what we call khawatir. Khawatir are thoughts that come to the heart. So you have khawatir, you have waridat, and you have ahwal. All these three are, are associated with, with the heart. Khawatir can be either good or bad. So in the same way, actions are driven by the state of the heart in terms of goodness. Actions are also driven by the state of the heart being bad. That's why you see someone can end up killing someone else. Someone can end up stealing from his family member because the state of the heart has pushed him to 
to doing so. And this shows us that the, the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is profound. And in many, many a hadith he has talked about the heart because the heart is the source of everything. Like the, there's a poet who said, إِنَّ الْكَلَامَ لَفِي الْفُؤَادِ وَإِنَّمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ عَلَيْهِ دَلِيلًا That indeed, words are in the heart. The tongue has just been made as a means to convey the message. So when someone says something or throws a comment, it has come from the heart most of the time. And that's why you'll find someone cannot help himself. If someone is jealous and is full of hatred, he cannot help himself. You'll find the words that come out of his mouth are not very good, are not encouraging words. But the one whose heart has been purified, he has treaded the spiritual path, he has stayed under a sheikh, he has followed a sheikh who has guided him to the right path. You'll find that the, the, the more the heart changes towards uh, uh, godliness, everything changes the way he walks the way he talks, the way he looks at people, the way he addresses people, the way he handles what goes on around him, it all changes because the king of the body is the heart. So this can happen to different people. That's why we say different people can be inclined to different uh, acts of uh, good. And it can also happen to the same individual depending on the states, as we mentioned earlier, when someone is sad, most of the time maybe he might go back to the Quran because he knows that verily in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find peace and tranquility. If someone is happy, he might be, he might be more charitable. He might be involved in charity work because he wants to spread the happiness to others and so forth and so on. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We ask him to grant us or rather to cleanse our hearts so that our actions become a reflection of the states of our hearts. Innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.